Hi guys and welcome back and today we get on with painting the tank crew for the M26 Pershing. So these are four resin figures done by Royal Model in 135th scale, it's kit number 339, the M26 Pershing crew World War II. So of course these are the American tank crew and they are displayed in American uniform. Of course I'll be painting them up in the Royal Haladonian Armoured Corps uniform as we go through this. But the uh, process is exactly the same. So I just have a bit of a look at the figures now, and I'd have to say I'm really impressed with them. They're really beautifully and crisply cleanly moulded. Lots of excellent detail, uh, down to the buckles on their braces and buttons, and yeah, by and large, just really, really happy with the quality of them. Not a lot of assembly required, just sticking a couple of arms on here and there. A little bit of filling, but not a lot, so you know, I use the epoxy Aves two-part epoxy resin, and uh, that smooths on, requires very little sanding, so pretty quick to get into the painting of these. So I thought with this video it would be more focused on process than technique, and that's mainly because I've had a few people ask me some questions about do I do figures the same way all the time? And, and largely the answer to that is yes. So I thought I'd just step through the process, the sequence that I do things in, rather than a detailed description of the process. I've done some of those before. So hopefully that's helpful and uh, it'll take you on the journey through the figures being constructed and painted. So the first thing to do is get into the priming. And in this instance, I started off with the Vallejo Acrylic Polyurethane Surface Primer. And at the black, that's 74.602. I love the Vallejo primer. I think it goes on really well. I just have to thin it slightly, and it really seems to help the paint grip. So a good all-round primer, I think. And then I lighten that mixture up in the airbrush with some Vallejo grey surface primer and come in from a top-down angle to, to get some highlight priming happening. Uh, I think it's called Zenith Highlighting and follow that up then with just a, a even lighter batch on the, on the face and the hands uh, where the flesh tone's going to go. So the next thing to do is to block out the colour, so you get all the base colours in. And there's not necessarily a particular order to this. I like to get the faces and the hands done first, and then I might start with the pants and work my way up. It really depends on the mood. So I'm using a bit of field grey and green grey for the pants. And again, this is not trying to be overly sophisticated, just blocking in the colours. Careful, but not fanatical. So if I overlap and get some paint in the wrong spot, I don't really worry about that. that uh, gets cleared up in the next stage, which is the detailed painting. And I do these as batch processing. So if I've got the blue out, I do all the blues at the same time. If I've got the brown out, I do all the browns at the same time, etc., etc., and just work my way through until I've uh, blocked in all of the colours. I also drilled out old mate's goggles so I could fill those with the UV curing clear glue just to um, give that a little bit more realism. And I've got a couple of annoying bubbles there, but that's all right. I can fix that up later on and because uh, it shrinks a little bit. So there's room to put some more in over the top of that as we get towards the end of the detail painting. So these are just some pictures of uh, the figures after the detail painting. I literally have the figures touching my nose. It's almost impossible to film them. I have to get so close and I've got my eight times magnifying glasses on as well just to see so it's just a lot of going over and backwards and forwards and dealing with any little bits and pieces that i see that are in the wrong spot and getting it into a nice solid consistency unfortunately i um, despite all that ocular help i managed to get that decal on backwards which was frustrating 
And um, then we'll just go into a little bit of some of the homemade decals that I did for the back of the jackets. So I'm using some white water slide laser decal paper, so for use in a laser colour printer, which luckily enough I have one. And this is the paper I'm using is from Dr. Decal and Mr. Hyde, and they're an Australian company. It's okay. I've also got their transparent decal paper. But what I find is on dark surfaces, you lose the colour of the actual decal. So I've been printing more recently on the white background. When you cut it, you can get that, you, you lose some of the toner from around the edges. So you need really need a guillotine type action to cut it, which I probably need to get one of those little guillotine machines. But uh, you can touch that up once it's on and you start doing some painting to blend it all in. So it's not terrible. I think they're not too bad, but I need to, to continue to experiment. So anyway, what you can see here is pretty self-explanatory. Just water. I put a little bit of the decal softening solution in there with it. And then it's just a matter of getting it on. You guys all know how to put decals on. So I'll just show you the process, a bit of music, and I will come back shortly.
So once that's all done, I give them a good gloss coat, clear gloss coat to protect everything that I've done up to this point and also help preserve the paint from then doing some highlighting here. I'm going to use some oils. These are just a really cheap set of oils from a, a supply place. They're just little tubes and pretty much just get out on a, on a piece of card all the colours that I think I'll need and then do a little bit of mixing to uh, try and get the right tones for the various parts of the uniform that I either want to put some shadow in or some ageing or some highlighting. So here I'm doing the shading colour for the overalls, the pants and the bib. So I've just taken some of that green. It's obviously really bright and horrible for what uh, I need. So putting a little bit of black in there to darken it up. So that's certainly taking the brightness out of the green. Put a little bit of white in there. I mean, for me, I'm, I'm not an expert on blending colours, and I know you can get a wheel, a colour chart, and that'll help you do all that sort of stuff, but I'm a little bit of a fly-by-the-suit-of-your-pants colour blender, so a bit of white in there to lighten it up, so it was still looking like nothing uh, at all like what I needed. And there's no science to this, I just sit there and think, all right, well, that's not actually heading in the direction, I wonder what this will do. So I put a little bit of ochre in there. And much to my pleasure, it um, suddenly turned into the colour that I thought I needed. So uh, that was sort of a happy accident, but I'll take it. And it's just experimentation until you get it close to what you are looking for. So you can see the rest of this as well. Um, I might have a, a, a rest from talking and uh, come back in a little while. So when I'm using the oils, what I'm really looking for is just the creases, the low spots that might be in shadow, just to darken those up, and areas that naturally might be a little bit uh, darker or stained, so perhaps under the under the armpits, um, back of the collar, things like that, uh, and just working it in gently.
then coming back with a clean brush with some mineral spirits on it and just blending it in. Now the good thing about this is even if you go on to other colours it's very easy to wipe it off so it's a pretty safe process. And then finally, once you're happy with what you've achieved, I just seal it all in with a gloss coat now. And that's in preparation for the last stage, which will just be to do a little bit of a wash. So the wash is just uh, mineral spirits and burnt umber oil paint mixed together and then rather than splashing it all over the place which is what I tend to do with the vehicles being a little bit more targeted and just looking again for the low spots so guiding it into the areas where it should naturally flow into anyway and trying to limit the you know I don't want it to be all over the place just to catch in those in those low spots. And then finally, to wrap it all up, a matte coat with the, again, the Vallejo acrylic matte clear. And that just locks everything in, and we are just about done. So, on to the final reveal. Or is it? And a very big problem at that. So all the way along, I've been really careful in my mind to think I can't seal this up until I've got the last piece of the wiring finished and I've got the driver in place. 
and I hadn't sealed the upper hull to the lower hull, and then when I finished the lighting, I was so happy that I'd got that done that I sealed it all up, forgetting the driver. So get to this point, and it's like, okay, this prick won't fit in. So tried to shave off the side of his legs, but it was really his arm, so you know, obviously it had to come in from underneath, and it was never going to fit in it otherwise. So quick thinking, what the hell am I going to do with this? And I have these Bronco correspondent figures, and I thought, okay, maybe he can be standing up in the lower hull and taking a photo, which sort of opens up some opportunities for some photos in the final reveal from his perspective. So a little bit of a setback, but you have to overcome in modeling stuff like this happens. So just using the legs and the arms, very carefully taking the arms off. Good thing about resin figures is you're typically gluing them with super glue. So it doesn't melt the parts together like the plastic glue would do, like the Tamiya Extra Thin or something like that. So the arms and that came off fairly easily. Just cleaned them up a little bit with the file and the blade to make sure that we'd have a, a nice surface to glue the new arms onto. And then just a test fitting. They're not a perfect fit. There'll have to be some trimming done of, of the arms where they join, but that's pretty straightforward. And then off with his legs and... Uh, Basically just a torso left. So what I'm doing here is just filing a groove in where the waists will come together. And that's how I can fill that with the epoxy putty to create the elastic band at the bottom of the leather jacket. And just delicately drilling out the camera lens here so I can also put in some of the clear UV glue to represent the glass in there. So this is the Aves two-part epoxy putty, which I really, really love because it doesn't take a lot of cleanup. And then just working that into the groove that I had made earlier and smoothing it in so that ensures I don't have to do any sanding. It smooths very nicely with the water. And then using the broken off end of a X-Acto blade, which I just filed down, putting in the marks for the elastic bands. And all things considered, really happy with how he turned out, and uh, a good save, I think. And so that's pretty much it. All the figures done. Uh, I'll give you a sneak peek of the tank as well, and the figures are all in their correct placings. So um, very happy with how they came out. It was great to be painting figures without any constraints in terms of the colours or anything like that. This is the Halidonian tanker's uniform, and uh, I think it looks pretty sharp. And so that's it. So look, great fun to paint the figures, as I said, and I think they've come out pretty well. I think the Halidonian armoured tank crew uniform is pretty cool. The next video that will come up is the painting of the tank, and that'll be the completion video, then the final reveal of everything. And uh, all that's filmed, I've just got to do the editing and the audio, so hopefully turn that around fairly quickly. And then I am just going to have a slight departure from the first encounter Halidonian diorama and do something with a splash more colour and open for people having a guess, and I'll give you a clue, a bit of red in the uniforms. So thanks for watching. Like and share. Subscribe and remember to click the bell so you get notifications. And as always, guys, really looking forward to your comments. So take care all, stay safe, keep your masks on and uh, wash your hands and do everything else that you need to do. And I will see you in the next one.